Slips, trips and falls can happen to anyone, but we know that they become more common as people age. In saying that, falls should not be dismissed as a part of getting older or that the person was not paying attention, as falls could be a warning sign that something is not right or that there are hazards that need to be addressed. Hi, I'm Kel from Culturally Directed Care Solutions, where we give you the knowledge and the tools to provide quality care with confidence. If you're new here, consider subscribing for the latest in industry tips and techniques. As we age, the likelihood of a fall increases. This is partly due to the changes that occur naturally as our bodies and brains age. Some of the natural changes that can occur as we age are slower reaction times, distance and depth perception changes in regards to eyesight, affected balance which can be due to stiffer joints, weaker muscles and perhaps medications. Sometimes these changes are not noticeable as they can occur slowly over time, but maybe you've noticed that it's becoming a little bit harder for someone to get out of that comfortable recliner or to get up and down the stairs or a person has suddenly tripped over a mat that has been in the same place for years because their feet may begin to drag a little or their eyesight is not as clear as it once was. There are other factors that can contribute to falls, one of these being medications. Common medications can produce side effects such as drowsiness, confusion and dizziness. It's important to be aware that some over-the-counter medications such as antihistamines, may also cause drowsiness. So it is important that instructions on the labels are carefully discussed with the consumer and any concerns noticed are well documented and passed on to the appropriate personnel. Side effects from health problems such as stroke, Parkinson's disease and dementia can increase the risk of falling dramatically as the disease process may affect a person's ability to move naturally, making it difficult to react quickly if they trip or stumble. Short-term illnesses are also a common factor in contributing to fall statistics. People who are generally quite healthy and active can fall due to dizziness and confusion associated with the flu or a head cold. So at these times it's wise to advise the person you are supporting to be especially careful when standing up from the lying down position. Then there are the physical hazards in our indoor living environment, such as water lying on the floor after a shower, talcum powder that remains on the floor of the bathroom, and damp floors from mopping. Potential outdoor trip hazards may include clumps of grass, divots in the ground or general uneven ground levels, and garden hoses laying about. Also, don't forget the family pet. That cute little dog or cat can become a trip hazard if they tend to hover around the feet of the elderly person. Additionally, clutter, ill-placed items of furniture and piles of loose papers lying around on the floor can become a hazard. People who have fallen in the past may experience some anxiety about falling again some people may also be fearful of falling because it happened to someone else they know. These fears can lead to a person restricting their activity, not socialising as much, and therefore increasing the risk of loneliness and isolation. As care providers, we need to relieve fears and encourage activity and independence of the people we support. So, how can we help? Firstly, it's important to talk with clients or residents and their families about falls risk assessments and make referrals to an occupational therapist or physiotherapist if or where necessary. Ensuring our clients or residents have good fitting footwear. If you have any concerns, a referral to a podiatrist is a good move. When providing support for people in their own home, conduct a home safety check and assist with removing hazards in both the home and the yard. This may not only assist to reduce the number of accidents associated with slips, trips and falls, but may make it easier in general for your client to get around in their home environment. 
And lastly, educate the client or resident and their family on any identified changes to their physical status that may increase the risk of a fall and assist to identify ways to minimise these risks. Ageing does not need to result in a loss of independence and may not necessarily lead to a fall. A few minor changes, such as the removal of a dog-eared rug from the lounge room floor and making sure a garden hose is secured on a wall bracket may be all that is needed in prevention efforts. If a person has fallen more than once in the last six months, there is an increased likelihood that they will fall again, so it's important to conduct a falls assessment. If a slip, trip or fall occurs, asking the person for details such as the time of the day they fell and what they were doing at the time and documenting carefully in their progress notes will assist in ensuring that all possible reasons for the fall are considered. We cannot prevent all accidents from occurring, but we can manage risks by working closely with our clients or residents and addressing issues and concerns as soon as they are identified. If you found this information useful, then please hit the thumbs up button below. And also, we'd love for you to contribute to the conversation. So please add to the comments section below, as it's always good to share your knowledge with the wider community and help to make the care industry better.